Hi, I'm Jen Matthew Sadler. And I'm WAM Natasha Regan. And welcome to this video about Game Changer, the English Chess Federation Book of the Year for 2019. In this video, we're going to give you the digital experience of Game Changer using the excellent Forward Chess app. In a minute, we're going to show you one of our very favourite AlphaZero games, the Rook's Pawn Symphony, we've called it, because uh, it involves a lot of use of the Rook Pawn. And it's a great game in true AlphaZero attacking style. So AlphaZero is a self-learning artificial intelligence algorithm uh, developed by DeepMind, and it taught itself uh, to play chess at a superhuman level. At the end of this video, we're going to tell you a little bit more about AlphaZero and also about our project to write Game Changer. But first, let's see the Rook's Pawn Symphony. Here's the Rook's Pawn Symphony. You'll find it within Chapter 16, which is on the Carlsbad. So let's uh, dive into the game. I'll just scroll down here, give a little bit of explanation about the, uh, the opening, and then we start on the game. We started with D4. So Queen's Gambit declined. Stockfish is white and Alpha Zero is black. Bishop d3, and now h6. That's a bit of an unusual move, isn't it? It is unusual. Um, it was always thought that it was um, um, a bad idea to um, uh, to chase away the bishop this early with h6, uh, mainly because it weakens the g6 square a little bit. Um, we can see how often it's been uh, played. Well, number of games, though uh, they're not as many as the main uh, as the main lines. Um, but uh, in actual fact, uh, Alpha Zero has a specific idea behind this uh, this move, as always. So we're going to carry on with Bishop H4. Ten Knight G2. Stockfish looks like it's going for Bot Phoenix plan. And we show more about that later in this chapter, which is a central strategy with f3 and then e4 for white. Yes, that's right. Um, um, keep the knight um, in a way behind the pawns and then f3 and e4 breaking in the centre. Very typical plan. It's the plan that I always play in these positions. In actual fact, uh, um, alpha zero's move with h6 is aimed just precisely against this plan. Knight d7 castles and now knight h5. Together with 7h6, this is a clever plan to present, prevent the f3 and e4 central strategy. The pawn on h7 is not attacked, so the bishops can be exchanged with knight h5. Yeah, so the queen on c2, bishop on d3 were aiming against h7. When you play h6, they're no longer attacked. And then after here, uh, you can just see it's hard to get an f3 and e4 because the e3 pawn is, uh, is attacked so much. So, um, um, yeah, I mean, Stockfish sort of plays as if it's going to try to do that, but then um, switches plan a little bit. And now this looks like a minority attack, which is a typical plan against the Carlsbad. Stockfish abandons any hope of achieving f3, e4, and switches to minority attack. White has lost some time, but it's not too crucial because the position is quite quiet. Yeah, I mean, now. yeah, I mean, there's not uh, there's not that much going on really um, at the moment, so losing a move is not too bad. Um, this pawn, pawn moves a three, b four. They um, they stop c five, and of course, White's threatening to go b five as well. So Alpha Zero keeps on developing, um, and uh, uh, Stockfish plays some uh, some reasonable developing moves, and then it starts. H five. Anybody who has seen Alpha Zero's games won't be surprised by this move. In fact, um, this game inspired a Dutch amateur player called Wim van der Weyck to play a game very similar to this. And he was pushing his A pawn and his H pawn. And just after he'd read the chapter of our book, he played a very, very fine game, which he won. Indeed, and uh, there's a video of that on our YouTube channel, actually. I think it's called, we called it the Rock and Roll Rook's Pawns, I think, on uh, on our channel. So well worth checking out. It was a great game. So Stockfish plays h3, uh, just to stop this um, pawn from advancing, also to take away g4 from the um, uh, from the Black Knight. Um, obviously, when you put your knight on e2 rather than f3, then uh, 
um, h2 is a bit more vulnerable so h3 covers that and this move g6 is um is quite typical as well i mean um it uh, um, gives the, the black king an escape square. Black might also consider moving the knight to g7, maybe exchanging off the light square bishops with bishop f5, or just playing knight to f5, which is quite a nice uh, um, attacking square as well. Yes, Stockfish decided to play rook a1. Stockfish didn't particularly fancy the immediate b5 for white, because if you if that gets taken a, b, a, b, then black can play c5. And so Stockfish decided to wait, hoping for a more favourable opportunity to break. That's a very dangerous way of playing against Alpha Zero. Yeah, I mean, it's um, uh, essentially Stockfish feels that uh, the position is 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 quite safe for White, and that um, a little bit of time wasted um, isn't such a bad thing. It's just waiting for a, a great opportunity to play B five. Um, but here, yeah, you know, Alpha Zero's always got a got a plan somehow to uh, to attack the opponent's king, and uh, well, the pieces start to. Uh, Start to come. So knight g5, uh, knight f4, knight g4. Um, and uh, actually this move knight f4 is perhaps a little bit unfortunate because uh, it's going to get in the way of a g5, g4 thrust, which is quite dangerous. But Stockfish decides to, um, to change the pawn structure here. Um, interesting idea. Um, certainly there's a, there's a one, there's a tactical threat at the moment, which is to, to play knight takes g6. So um, uh, Alpha Zero avoids that. Um, H4, a very nice move as well. Fixing um, the H pawn on H3, so it just means that G5, G4, that pawn on H3 is a fixed target. Rook B1, um, yeah, Stockfish teeing up now, thinking probably thinking that it's time to uh, to start taking some action. Um, unfortunately, Alpha Zero thinks so too. Alpha Zero has played its king to h6, and this is another typical Alpha Zero mannerism. It often finds a safe place for its king by putting it on the third rank on one of the rook's files. And this time, it's the key for making room for an attack down the g-file. Exactly. I think we can, we can see which move's coming next. Rook g8, threatening g4. Um, I mean, it's quite astounding, really, that, uh, you know, just in... Uh, um, in a really a very quiet uh, Queen's Gambit decline Carlsbad, we, you know, suddenly we're getting a, a huge attack coming from nowhere. So um, Stockfish played b5 now, which is uh, quite interesting. Um, you know, basically Stockfish has, uh, has decided that um, it's time, uh, since uh, the storm clouds are gathering on the king's side, it's time to, you know, open the queen's side, get some counterplay. But um, uh, Alpha Zero has a, a very unusual reaction here, but a very, very strong one. And again, this is one of the key things that Wim van der Weyck did, uh, this Dutch amateur that we talked about before, that he did in his game that was quite amazing. Takes an A5. So A5 is a wonderful idea. You can see this past A pawn now uh, powering down the board. And it's not black that's going to get distracted by queenside play. It's white. Exactly. Let's have a look how this goes. B6, trying to cut off the A pawn, but that's that's no worry at all. Queen A2 and then A3. Now just see how passive the white queen is. It reminds us of a famous game, um, Capablanco against Sir George Thomas from Hastings, 1934, in which Sir George defeated the great Capablanca due to exactly such a poorly placed queen that Capablanca had. We're going to give the game later in the chapter. Yeah, the games uh, can be seen later in the chapter. It's a wonderful, a wonderful game. It was uh, Sir George Thomas's, uh, I think, the pinnacle of his career, Hastings, uh, 1934-35. And uh, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a great game as well. But it really shows uh, um, how a, a passive queen can influence the rest of, uh, the rest of your position. So Stockfish tries to round up the A-pawn, but... It's not as easy as it seems. Big break on the um, on the G file first of all, and then this move H three. So why can't White just take that pawn? Well, we can uh, ask the computer. In actual fact, we've got um, uh, within the app we've got Stockfish ten. We can just uh, switch it on. Can give it as much um, as much uh, memory and uh, um, as much uh, um, CPU power as we want. It's very useful. Um, uh, very good as well. You see that um, it started off liking G takes H3, but gradually likes it less and less. And actually, the longer you leave it, 
um, the um, uh, yeah the less it likes its uh, position. Uh, the key uh, point in actual fact is that um, uh, if I just uh, show this line takes on here, you can see we can just play through, which is very nice. King there, king e2, and then rook g c8. This is quite uh, um, this is quite tough for um, for. Uh, um, for, for white, this uh, pin on the C file is very awkward, especially considering that the uh, there's also the possibility of a bishop maybe coming to the, to uh, to the A6 F1 diagonal. You know, it's um, really could be very unpleasant indeed. So uh, as you can see, uh, stockfish liking it less and less the longer we leave it going. Obviously, uh, the more threads, uh, CPU threads, the more memory you give it, the quicker it uh, it finds that. So that's pretty uh, pretty nasty. So um, let's have a little look then at. Um, what actually happened, which was g3. We're just going to go back there. Um, so just basically trying to keep the g file uh, closed. But, well, we've got a very dangerous uh, looking rook's pawn there on the other side. So after g3, rook g c8. The rook's done its duty on the g file. Now it's coming to the c file and uh, pinning that rook on c3. King g1, h2 check, king g2, and now king g7. So the king has done its work on h6, and now it redeploys to the g file, allowing the rook to have the h file. That's right. I mean, at some stage, black could also have rook h8, or later in the game, I think we see queen h6, um, threatening to push forward that, uh, that h pawn. So this is a pretty nasty position for uh, for Stockfish. It's got very passive. But how do you put white away? That's the key question. It wasn't at all obvious to me. Um, but there's a, a really great idea that comes in. Let's move rook a5. Fantastic idea. Bishop b2. Takes, takes. Queen b4. So um, aiming for queen b2. So makes the uh, white rook get passive again. The queen goes back to d6. So just this little um, move to the side and then back. Black's improved the position of its queen and made the white rook passive as well. Very you know, typical uh, um, way of playing and very, very effective. And of course, the queen now is aiming at h6 in order to support the, the push of the h-pawn. Bishop c4, queen h6, king h1 getting in the way. And now this fantastic move, rook f5. And I hadn't realised quite how strong the threat of Rook takes f4 is. The key is to finding a new weakness, um, and this will be a weakness on d4, which in the end will let the black queen in and will be very strong. Yeah, I mean, um, this move, rook takes f4, is a huge threat. Um, as you can see, what, what actually happens uh, uh, in the game, e takes f4, bishop f5. So first of all, um, uh, the e pawn gets some uh, some big impetus, so um, it's uh, able to advance, and the light squared bishop gets active. And well, you see how vulnerable this h one a eight diagonal is. So if the bishop could possibly get to to e four, you know, that would be something like checkmate. Um, the other thing, you know, that that's not too bad to uh, to, to spot. But the the, the amazing uh, other thing is this um, uh, this idea simply that uh, the d four pawn is very weak. When the queen gets that d4 pawn, then um, uh, well, then queen takes f2 or knight takes f2 is getting is getting very very close, and uh, well, stockfish uh, uh, tries to hold on, but it's not really going to succeed. Knight check, knight check again. Actually, clearing that rook's pawn is uh, is very very positive for black because if the king goes back to h1, then uh, simply queen h6 check will uh, will uh, will deliver mate. So Stockfish played um, uh, king g2, and then after queen takes d4, um, Stockfish resigned. So let's see why Stockfish resigned in this position. Yeah, let's have a little look at, uh, at uh, Stockfish. We'll switch it on again. And what's it saying? It's saying that the best move is uh, uh, queen c3. Um, but then we've got knight e3 check, and you can see forking the king and the bishop. So after king g1, we've got queen takes c3, rook takes c3, knight takes d5, which is uh, a, uh, a pretty easy win for um, uh, for black. So Stockfish resigned. Mm, what a fantastic game. Yeah, hope you enjoyed that one. Um,
just uh, after this uh, uh, after this game in a in a minute or so we'll be uh, we're going to talk about um our project to write game changer and also tell you a little bit more about alpha zero thanks very much for listening Well, AlphaZero burst into the consciousness of the chess world in December 2017 with uh, when 10 games were released between uh, in the match between uh, AlphaZero and Stockfish. I was really fascinated by seeing these games because AlphaZero was self-taught and I was interested as to whether it would play in the same style that we do as humans or whether it would come up with its own new style. It was the strongest machine ever to reach that strength by being completely self-taught without learning human strategy. Yeah, and of course the games themselves were amazing, those initial 10 games. Uh, quote a number in Game Changer, Queen H1, that's uh, that's one of the uh, the all-time amazing moves uh, in, in, in chess history, actually. When we saw those games, we had the idea um, that we could write a book on this, maybe, and tell the story behind Alpha Zero because AI is capturing the imagination of the public. And so we both knew Demis Hassabis and we had previously won Book of the Year for another book, Chess for Life. And so we approached Demis and said, wouldn't it be nice if we wrote a similar type of book on Game Changer? And um, yeah, and uh, that actually led to the to the whole making of Game Changer. So um, I mean, I remember just uh, seeing games from uh, from the new match that uh, that um, uh, DeepMind was preparing. Um, you know, a couple of hundred games and just wonderful, wonderful games. I just had a, an incredible time playing through them. And uh, then you really knew that uh, there was really a book worth writing about uh, about this fantastic chess. It was a few months that we were writing the book before. Uh, we could say anything about it. It was completely confidential. And one of the moments I remember most um, in that process was when Matthew was saying about how he'd noticed these positions that Alpha Zero was evaluating well and Stockfish was evaluating as just equal, 0 0.00. And uh, when he told me that, I thought this was really, really fascinating. And we decided to try and find lots of examples of this um, and where this was happening in games and where it was happening in our own analysis. Yeah, it's um, um, yeah, that's a really great chapter. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, got a whole chapter to itself, and uh, we look at all types of positions in which um, um, well, Stockfish got outplayed by Alpha Zero probably just because of that uh, better assessment of the position. Very unusual position. Some attacking, some uh, just purely strategical. And Alpha Zero just knew a way of making progress in these positions. And this type of thing is where the chess world, maybe there had been positions where people had thought, is Stockfish's evaluation right? But people hadn't weren't really aware of this um, phenomenon about zero, zero, zero. No, I think uh, I think when you see um, um, uh, someone actually demonstrating that uh, that one of those positions is not as equal as uh, as we thought, I think uh, that gives you a lot of encouragement to uh, to apply it to your own games. And we've been, um, yeah, I've been really, really encouraged by the uh, the positive reaction, you know, and the enthusiastic reaction that uh, the Game Changer has had. Um, I mean, we've been oh, quite a bit all over the country and also internationally as well, talking to uh, to chess players, you know, about um, uh, about Game Changer, and uh, really been, uh, you know, seeing that people are very encouraged to uh, to try out Alpha Zero's uh, style of play in their own games. People are having a lot of fun pushing their H pawns, sacrificing material and trying some of Alpha Zero's opening novelties. We've also had a lot of fun because Alpha Zero didn't just learn chess, but it also learned Go and Shogi as well. And that's inspired us to learn the Japanese version of chess, which is Shogi, which has been a really fascinating game. Yeah, that's been that's been uh, that's been really wonderful. But yeah, anyway, I mean, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. Hope you uh, enjoy, you know, reading Game Changer on Forward Chess, and uh, hope you have a lot of fun, you know, trying out Alpha Zero's ideas in your own games. Thank you for watching. Thanks very much.